Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. I think we can expect to see lots of those things in the skies during the next few nights, but are there any weather fireworks on the way during the next two weeks? Well, I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The sequence here runs from 15 GMT, Friday, November the 5th. It's a quiet picture to begin with. High pressure to the southwest exerting quite a lot of influence across the UK. There are patchy outbreaks of rain in the west and the northwest, but much of the country is dry, quite chilly too. Through Saturday, though, things change. Uh, a weather front pushes southeastwards across the country. That brings outbreaks of rain, but they become lighter and patchier as they move down into central and southern counties. The thing to note here, though, is the strength of the winds in the north. You can see the ice bars here are very, very tightly packed. There could be some damaging gusts around through Saturday and into Sunday. I'll look at that in a little bit more detail in a moment. Into the early part of next week, and the general picture doesn't change a great deal. Atlantic weather fronts brush the northwest, bringing outbreaks of rain, which could be heavy at times, but the high pressure centered to the south should continue to bring a lot of dry weather to central and southern parts of Britain. At times, those Atlantic weather fronts may well push southeastwards, but they will be decaying, so the rain associated with them becomes more fragmented and lighter. Through to the end of the sequence, the same general pattern continues. One thing that has been changing, though, is that we started to pull up milder air from the southwest. So after that rather chilly start, there is the potential for temperatures to climb quite significantly. I'll just show a few jet stream charts associated with that sequence. So beginning Saturday, November the 6th, there's a vigorous jet stream moving across the North Atlantic here, making a beeline for the northern half of the UK. That's where the wettest conditions are going to be. Jumping forwards to Monday the 8th, at this point the jet stream is heading northwards and then over the top of the UK and down into Scandinavia there. Moving forwards to Wednesday the 10th, it's not a particularly strong and organised jet stream here across the North Atlantic. Often at this time of the year, it's a much more vigorous flow. So potentially that could have some impacts in the longer term as well as the short term. Moving forwards to Friday E312, the last one of these jet stream charts, which I'll show. Again, it's a similar story. The jet stream's looping up here to the north of Scotland and across into Scandinavia. But as I say, it's not particularly well formed for this time of year. It's often flatter and faster across the North Atlantic. Were the jet stream profile to remain disorganized and quite messy, rather like this as we head through the rest of the month and into the winter, it would potentially increase the chances of colder spells of weather in the UK. All depends on where the pressure blocks would fall and set up, of course, but with a weak and disorganized jet stream, the chance, at least, of colder weather would be increased. However, it's not looking particularly cold in the short term. The opposite, if anything, Forecast minimums, minimums here for uh, Sunday the 7th. Still a little bit chilly in the north there across Scotland, down into low single figures. In the, in the south though, 8, 9 Celsius, significantly milder than it has been recently. Looking at the daytime temperatures for Sunday, still not particularly uh, warm. Low double figures in the south, high single figures there in the north. But then if we move forwards to Wednesday the 10th, showing minimums here, now into double figures in the south, 10, 11 Celsius overnight, that's 12 or 14 there in the southwest, if this is correct, becoming very mild at night. Even the daytime temperatures are likely to be rising too. This is a, a postage stamp chart from the UK Met Office MoGreps model. It shows, each stamp shows the output forecast from one of the runs in the ensemble. Maximum temperatures here have been displayed on November the uh, 9th. And if you look closely, you'll see that a lot of these are going for 13s, 14s, 15s Celsius in southern and central parts of Britain. So significantly milder than it has been recently as air is pulled up from the southwest. 
I mentioned the strength of the winds on Saturday and Sunday. There's charts from the, again, it's the UK Met Office, high resolution, high resolution UK V model. It's valid for 18 GMT, Saturday V6. Look at the wind strengths there across Scotland, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s up there, off to the northwest. It's actually quite windy even in southern and central parts of Britain too. Then, just jumping forwards to 08 GMT on Sunday the 7th, still very, very windy across Scotland. I think we've got maximum gusts of about 74 miles per hour on this particular chart. That's in overland as well. Of, of, in coastal counties, we could, as I say, be seeing even higher gusts at times during this period. Still windy in southern and central regions, but I don't think that's going to be causing any problems there. It's really the northern half of the UK where there is the potential for damaging gusts. Rainfall, I'll bring up the five and 10 day accumulated rain charts from the GFS model. It's a fairly straightforward picture. There isn't a great deal of rain on either of these charts in southern and eastern parts of the UK. It's, you've got to head up to the northwest to find the very wet conditions. Day is 0 to 5, about 50 millimetres in western Scotland there. Day is 0 to 10, over 100 millimetres locally, once again in western Scotland. But much of the country is looking fairly dry through this 10 day period, certainly much more so than would often be the case during the middle part of November. So, what are the other deterministic models shown at one week ahead? Are they consistent with the sequence which I ran based on the GFS model? Here, here is the chart from the GFS, Friday the 12th of November, just to recap. We've got high pressure here to the south, southeast of the UK, uh, an Atlantic flow brushing across the west and the northwest, that really it looks like high pressure would be having quite a lot of influence as I discussed. Here's the Canadian model at the same time, quite similar. You always expect differences, they're never going to be identical. Once more though, high pressure to the center, uh, to the south of the UK, having more influence in southern and central Britain. Next, the German icon model, similar once again, high pressure there, extending northwards across the UK. If anything, perhaps having a little bit more influence. The European ECM model, there are differences here. The high pressure is built even further northwards. It's really keeping the whole of the UK dry at this point. Were this scenario to materialize, it would lead to an increasing risk of nighttime frost and fog. The temperatures during the days could also be suppressed, so potentially colder according to the ECM. Finally, the UK Met Office model at the same point, big differences here, a nasty looking area of low pressure tracking across Scotland, very strong winds wrapped around it, heavy and showery outbreaks of rain there too. High pressure not really having any influence at this point, even in the south. Taking all those deterministic model runs together, mm, a little bit of uncertainty this week. Last time there was more consistency. Here we have one such as the ECM building high pressure northwards across the UK. At the same time, the UK Met Office run is showing a nasty area of low pressure, bringing unsettled conditions. I think on balance here, what I would conclude is that high pressure probably will be having quite a lot of influence in southern and central Britain, rain more likely in the north, rather mild generally. The UK Met Office operational run here, quite possibly an outlier, so I don't think it's going to be correct. It could be, it could well be, but at the moment I'd go for a more high pressure dominated scenario. Well, if that was week one, how is week two looking? I'll now focus on the ensemble data as usual to try and identify the trends and the probabilities. Beginning with the 16 day GEFS plot for London, southeastern England. Across the top, upper air temperatures with the thick black line here showing the 30 year average. The picture is quite a straightforward one. The ensemble mean, the purple there, stays above that thick black line throughout the second week. There are colder runs in the mix. One or two of them are bringing in significantly cold upper level air. 
Nonetheless, for majority are looking rather mild or mild. That's at the 850 HPA level, so about 1500 meters over our heads. In terms of rainfall, well, a few spikes appear through the second week there. The Fit Green Run is the GFS operational, it actually looks quite wet at that point, but most of the runs are keeping conditions rather dry or very dry throughout that period, suggesting that high pressure continues to have a lot of influence in this part of the UK. Just if you are starting to think about the possibility of snow, even in the south, here's the snow row. The maximum value it reaches there towards the end is two. It can go up to 33, so it's suggesting a two in 33 chance of snow falling at the very end of this period. I think that's a very low chance, but you never know. Up to Glasgow, a air temperature profile here is, is, is different. It begins above average, just like in the south, but it dips for more colder runs here. And then through much of the second week, it's close to that thick black line, the 30 year norm. Rainfall also different, there are more spikes showing, a greater risk of rain, not particularly wet though, according to the ensemble. So probably some rain at times, but also a reasonable amount of dry periods, even up here in the northwest of the UK. Two meter temperatures, I've brought up the data table to look at these in a little more detail. So I'll focus on maximums and minimums today because obviously at this time of year, frost is an increasing risk. London first. And through the second week, something of a cooling trend shows the amount of the light greens in the columns, the amount of light green in the columns increases. Light greens are runs forecasting maximums of between six and 10 Celsius. The yellows, the, those are runs between 11 and 15 Celsius, they decrease there as we go through the second week. All in all though, it's going from mild back down towards the seasonal average, probably nothing more than that. Say it's worth taking a look at minimums as well. London again, what we can see is that the columns are mostly light green, so this is also six to 10 Celsius for minimum values. But there is some dark green, those are runs going for between one and five. At the very end, there's a little bit of blue there, runs which are going for naught to minus eight Celsius. When I say a little bit of blue, 3% equates to one of the runs in the ensemble. So it's a very small number. Now up to Glasgow, focusing on maximums once again. Here the comms are mostly light green to begin with, but the amount of light green decreases through the second week. The amount of dark green increases there, dark green being the one Celsius to five Celsius runs. So the cooling trend, which was evident at the upper air level, is also present down at the ground fairly good consistency being, being shown there. Minimums in Glasgow, well, the amount of blues there increases through the, through the period, reaches about 29, 30%, 39% of the very end. So a much greater risk of frost in the northern half of the UK based on these data tables using the GEFS data. I've been talking about the influence of high pressure. Uh, the ensemble graph here is for York, and it's, it's again, it shows quite a mixed picture, but I think it's predominantly a high pressure dominated one through the second week. The mean, the thick purple line there is close to 1,020 millibars, which, which is above the average at this time of year. It's just worth though, taking on board the fact that a number of the runs are bringing in quite deep area of areas of low pressure through the second half of the second week. It shouldn't be discounted. So a much more unsettled scenario is being suggested as a possibility here. The most probable outcome is that high pressure will continue to have a good deal of influence, at least from York southwards, I would suggest, with perhaps less influence as you head north. All in all though, I, it looks like, it looks like a, a more settled picture than would often be the case in the middle part of November. 
Looking at the ensemble mean pressure on Monday the 15th of November from the GEFS, so remember this is just averaging out all the runs in the model. What you can see is that high pressure really looks to be having a lot of influence, potentially exerting that all the way northwards across the UK with the Atlantic there just into Northern Ireland and parts of Scotland. That is where the risk of rain would be the greatest. Is that consistent with the European model, the ECM? Yes, it is. This also has high pressure here, bringing a lot of uh, potentially dry weather across the UK. It's just worth, I think, saying that if, uh, if the high pressure does build quite far northwards and we get very calm conditions across at least southern and central Britain, clear skies too, it would lead to an increase in risk of nighttime frosts. It, which, which wasn't really being suggested by those GEFS two meter minimum temperature data tables, especially not in the south where very few were dipping down below naught Celsius. But as I say, were we to end up with uh, very calm conditions, clear skies at this time of year, temperatures would fall sharply by night. Fog could also become a problem. So to summarize the next two weeks, it's quite a chilly start to begin with, but it will be turning milder as we go through the first week. Very windy conditions are likely in the north between the 6th and the 7th. Gusts could be exceeding 60 miles per hour in places, leading to some damage. It's generally quite a changeable picture, but the rain will mostly be affected in the northwest of the UK. Other parts will often be dry. Week two, again, high pressure probably continues to dominate things across southern and central regions at least. After a mild start, temperatures could well be dipping later on. That leads to an increased risk of frost, but I think at this stage, it's, it's really a case of temperatures dipping from quite a high level back down to something closer to the seasonal norm, not really looking cold. Once again, the chance of rain is greatest in the north of the UK, but at times it will probably be weakening weather fronts pushing southeastwards, which bring the chance of at least a little bit of rain to southern and central Britain. So, I think that's more or less it. In terms of will there be any weather fireworks, I guess you would say probably Saturday the 6th, uh, Sunday the 7th, with those very strong winds affecting parts of the north. That aside, uh, and the very wet conditions in the northwest at times, but uh, apart from those things, it generally looks quite benign for the time of the year, with high pressure uh, maintaining a lot of influence as we go through the next couple of weeks. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, then as usual, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks now, bye.